My name is Peter Reynosa, and I will be reading a paper I wrote called Why President Trump is Not a Philosopher. I will be looking down at the paper and reading it and using my glasses as a bifocal so I won't be looking up that much. And I do this because if I look up and down, I actually get my vision blurred too much. So I will focus on that. Okay, here we go. Why, excuse me, why President Trump is not a philosopher? Why President Trump is not a philosopher? And I am speaking from the city of San Francisco. Is President Donald Trump a philosopher? No. The current political leader of the free world is not a philosopher. But why is this? President Trump is not a philosopher because he has never concerned himself with philosophical issues, has read very little, if anything, on the subject of philosophy, and has very little understanding of what philosophy is. But most importantly, to be a philosopher, one must practice philosophy. And Trump has never philosophized. In fact, he may not even know what to philosophize means. I shall now both ask and answer what is philosophy, so we may better understand why Trump should not be seen as a philosopher. Philosophy is the asking of life's most serious and profound questions about what it means to exist and the attempt at answering these questions. Philosophy is also trying to understand and describe the true nature of reality. And there are many different aspects of philosophy. Philosophy is St. Augustine explaining how when God created the world, he also created time. Philosophy is Martin Heidegger wondering about what it means to be a conscious thing in the world. And philosophy is Gottfried Leibniz trying to figure out why there is something rather than nothing. Trump seems to have never went through a period of his life when deep philosophical questions haunted him. What is the meaning of life? What is the cause of everything? Does God exist? What is the difference between appearance and reality? How do we know that we know anything? Does history have a purpose? Is war ever justified? What is the good society? What is truth? These types of questions have never been part of Trump's life story. And like almost all people, while he may have occasionally wondered about the larger questions of life, there is no record of his taking seriously any of these types of queries and no evidence or proof that he ever dedicated any segment of his life to passionately trying to find answers to any of these mysteries. Many philosophers also define philosophy as using reason and our observation to try to understand the world. Our first philosophers, the pre-Socratics, did not look to religion or revelation or tradition or authority or myth or even our emotions to explain the universe they found themselves in, but tried to use their reasoning ability to speculate about what the nature of the universe was. If philosophy can be said to be primarily about methodology, it is the emergence of rational thinking, and it is the acceptance and promotion of reasoned arguments, and it is also the idea that there are natural and rational truth in our universe that can be explained by our powers of reasoning. Philosophy is Immanuel Kant reasoning that the mind does not just become aware of reality but also how it's created. Philosophy is Epicurus explaining why we need not fear punishment after we are dead because there is no life consciousness after one has died. And philosophy is Mary Wollstonecraft postulating that men and women both have the power to reason and if women were educated like men, they would also be equal thinkers to men. Does Trump use his reasoning abilities when he talks about a view he holds? Does Trump pay any attention to what he is saying when he is ignoring facts that contradict his views? Does Trump try to avoid using fallacies when he thinks? Does Trump use reason and evidence to find proof to back a belief he holds? No. In fact, Trump has become infamous for having views where he often never explains by means of rational argument why he holds these views, often simply stating something unrelated to evidence or proof and then acting like what he has said is somehow a rational argument for his view. Logic and rational argumentation are nearly non-existent in a Trump argument. There are times when Trump does explain and give valid reasons for his actions and beliefs but too often logic and rational argumentation are missing from his reasoning. 
Some philosophers focus on the fact that humans are naturally curious and want to understand the world around them and think that it is this desire that is the true foundation of philosophy. Curiosity has been called the mother of philosophy, for philosophy begins with the quest of the curious to understand a thousand things. What is a star? What does lightning, why does lightning occur? Is it wrong to murder someone? Our primal desire to know forces, excuse me, our primal desire to know forces us to begin to contemplate and ask questions, but it is, but it is only when we start to ask the most profound questions about being alive does philosophy, does philosophy truly come into existence. Aristotle's sense of wonder at how so much of our natural world is alive and yet so different is philosophy. Kurt, Gödel, excuse me, Kurt Gödel's fascination how mathematics relates to reality is philosophy too. And Galileo wondering why the night nice skies reveal not some spiritual heaven but merely more of nature that is just further away from us is also philosophy. President Trump seems to hold no curiosity as to why the laws of nature exist. Is he at all concerned about what is consciousness or how there is our or excuse me, or how there can be order in our universe? Does he ever wonder if words refer to reality? Has he tried to find out what the coherence theory of truth is? Has Trump ever wondered about what is human nature? And did Trump at any time of his life seriously contemplate what our emotions are. Trump also seems to be indifferent to what philosophers of the past have thought. Does he care that the German philosopher Johann Fichte believed that the universe is the creation of our minds? Does Trump wonder why the ancient Greek philosopher Pythagoras thought ultimate reality was numbers and how modern day cosmologist Max Tegmark promotes the idea that our universe is a mathematical structure? Is Trump angered by St. Anselm's belief that reason must be the servant of faith? Does he ever think Thomas Hobbes' view that rational self-interest is good for society is wrong? Does he find it counterintuitive that the pre-Socratic philosopher Parmenides argued that change is an illusion? Philosophy is also about searching for an ethical way of life. It is not only about ideas and insights and theories, but philosophy is also about how we should exist and how we should try to live a better life. A lot of philosophers see philosophy as an argument over what is the good and right way to live. And usually a philosopher will try to practice what he or she is preaching and attempt to live his or her philosophy. When the existentialist Carl Jaspers advised people to not just accept a philosophy, but to also create one that is personal and original to oneself, he did live this way and did what he said people should do. John Stuart Mill did not just write a book arguing for women's equality to men, he breathed to life this view in how he treated other women as though they were equal to him. Buddha not only told us what he had experienced and learned about love, he also tried to become the living embodiment of what love for all creatures should look like. But a philosopher does not have to live the philosophy she or he praises and promotes. The love and compassion that Arthur Schopenhauer describes humans should have for each other seems quite lacking in his personal life. Has President Trump both promoted a philosophy and lived this philosophy? The answer is an emphatic no. He does have a personal philosophy how one should live and he would say that he has lived this personal philosophy. But his philosophy is just a personal view how one should live. His philosophy is not the philosophy of Pyro or Vico, excuse me, Pyro or Vico or Derrida. His philosophy is just a simple outlook on life. It mainly consists of nostalgic traditionalism, emphasis on money making as the ideal and has almost no concerns about the profound or the moral or the intellectual. His philosophy is trivially personal, not profoundly philosophical. His philosophy makes no attempt at understanding the deepest questions of what it means to exist. Trump has not lived a life in the pursuit of wisdom, nor has his personal philosophy dealt with existence and knowledge and, and ethics at the philosophical level. 
And so the answer to the question, has Trump lived his philosophy, is a no, because one cannot live a philosophy if one has no philosophy to be lived. And here when I am talking about Trump's personal philosophy, I am referring to how he lived his life and what he believed before running for president and becoming president of the United States of America. His political beliefs and all the controversy that has surrounded him because of them only became known after he became political. If Trump had passed away in 2013, I suspect his politics would be only a tiny part mentioned in future biographies about him and he would never be portrayed as, as so politically controversial. As mentioned earlier, philosophy revolves around the rational. Yet strangely, maybe, maybe even wonderfully, wonderfully, philosophy often is about the irrational too. And while many philosophers think philosophy is and should be about reasoning, much of philosophy remains related to what is the irrational. The belief that our universe and our existence is not based on reason and rationality is still a very popular way of seeing the human condition. The idea that reason is not the true path we should be seeking to understand our existence leads to belief that some form of irrationalism should be our high god. And this eerie idea travels on to an even odder fact. Philosophers arguing by usage of rationality against rationality. Soren Kierkegaard positing that more truth is subjective is philosophy. Friedrich Nietzsche proclaiming that reason and rationality are not what motivates us, motivates us is philosophy. Schopenhauer unveiling the most irrational of irrationalism, the will, is philosophy too. And yes, Paul Feyerabend claiming that a person should be skeptical about knowledge and that one cannot say science is more truthful than vampirism is also philosophy, even if it leads to a sane man arguing for an insane idea. And bringing up the fact that philosophy is often irrationalism is not going to be used as a basis for an argument that Trump's irrationalism can be linked to philosophy. Our president's misusage of reason, his self-contradictions, his unscientific pronouncements, and his statements unrelated to facts are not a rejection of reason and rationality, not a form of conscious self-irrationality, but something that is simply caused by his lack of education and his incomprehension of what is a fact and what is not a fact, and his unfamiliar, unfamiliarity with critical thinking and his misunderstanding of what reason and rationality are. The belief systems in philosophy that ignore or belittle or reject or even demonize reason and rationalism do these, do these things unrelated to President Trump's motives for doing what he does. And there are many other ways to show how Trump is not a philosopher. Does Trump have a working understanding of a lot of the words and terms found in philosophy? Does he understand why John Locke was against the idea of a priori knowledge? Would he be able to understand how Plotinus used emanationism to explain the creation of the world? Might he be able to see clearly the ambiguity and foggish nature of Edmund Husserl's definition of phenomenology? Does he know the difference between ethical nihilism and epistemological nihilism and cosmological nihilism? Can he explain the, how probabilism and fallibilism relate to existing in a world without certainty of knowledge? Does he understand how some philosophers believe the main task of philosophy is to explain language games, while others like Albert Camus believe it exists to deal with the absurd? Has President Trump ever thought about some of the ideas and concepts found in the world of philosophy? Has Trump thought about George Berkeley's idea that nothing exists except our perceptions of it? Did our president once ponder how quantum physics threatens the laws of some of our logic systems? Was Trump ever overwhelmed by horror or pure joy when it came to understand Baruch, Baruch Spinoza's belief that all is God? Can Trump explain to us why Zeno of Alia promoted logic as a way of being in harmony with the universe? Has Trump ever thought about the fantastic idea that we may never be able to prove that, that other minds exist? 
it is also very important in philosophy to be aware of a lot of different doctrines and movements and schools of thought. Can Trump tell us why continental philosophy and analytic philosophy are in a war without any possibility of peace? Can he discuss how Taoism and Heraclitus' philosophy share so much in common? Does he understand how much German idealism affects the way some philosophers see the world today? If asked to explain why American pragmatism is an exponent of a definition of truth that outrages many other philosophers, could he? Has he ever talked seriously about the ethics of animal liberation, animal rights, the intrinsic value of all living things, or even the speciesism that is our world? Has Trump thought about what is the difference between modernism and postmodernism? Would he be able to explain to us how feminist theory is connected to the philosophy of structuralism? And to be a philosopher, one must wrestle with many of the very difficult problems philosophers face. Has our president thought about whether logic is the truth of our universe or whether logic is just a language tool we have created that does not correspond to the true nature of our universe? Does Trump ever ponder if justified true belief is a good definition for knowledge? Has Trump ever tried to imagine an ethical system without self-contradictions? Late at night, when people are not pestering our president, does it plague or even bother him that so many of our philosophical beliefs seem to depend on axioms that are not provable? While Western civilization has a philosophy tradition, much of the world also has philosophical traditions. Other worldviews or realities do exist. Does Trump see and feel the difference and sameness between Eastern and Western philosophy? Can he hear the Upanishads in the writings of the American transcendentalist Ralph Waldo Emerson? Does he know the bias of a Westerner as it relates to the written word over the oral tradition as it pertains to African philosophy? When he looks to Latin America, does he feel the suffering that caused the belief in liberation through, through theology to come into existence? Has President Trump ever read a poem by an indigenous woman from Mexico that seems to be at, about a strange world of both the living and the dead interacting with each other as if they existed in the same place? Will he ever notice how Dadaism and the Zen of Japan both try to break apart the rationality of the world so a flashing light of unimaginable truth can be directly experienced? Has Trump studied the Buddhist sage Nagarjuna? I'm not pronouncing that, I think it's that. Has Trump studied the Buddhist sage Nagarjuna and his idea that all things are empty and what this might mean? And what of all the branches of philosophy? Is our president even aware of what they might be or what they deal with? Does Trump understand what someone is talking about when the person says that Thomas Hobbes and Baron Dobach and Marquis de Sade and all, all share the same metaphysics? Is he aware of the fact that Rene Descartes used rationalism and deduction and Isaac Newton used empiricism and induction to try to explain reality? Does Trump, does Trump understand when Ludwig Wittgenstein changed the question from God, does God exist, to what are we saying when we say does God exist, how much he changed philosophy? Does our president know or even want to know how George Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel declared truth to be a social construct of history and culture? Does he comprehend Karl Marx's view that economic classes control the creation of truth? Has he studied why Michel Foucault argued that truth is often created as a means of keeping the powerful powerful. Has Trump ever read about how God excuse me, has Trump ever read about how God loved Frigi? Excuse me, God loved Frigi? Excuse me, it's alright. Has Trump ever read about how God loved Frigi tried to prove the idea that logic is not created by humans but exists exists objectively? What does Trump think about the belief that being illogical is equal to being immoral? Can he even fathom how logical log consistency is, a, is the good? Let me repeat that again. Can he even fathom how logical consistency is the good? Does Trump agree with G.E. Moore's idea that all definitions of good are always open questions? 
When some philosophers argue that all moral expressions are simply expressions of our emotions that have no meaningful truth, does Trump agree or disagree with this idea? How does President Trump feel about the feminist idea that the personal, personal is political? Is he even aware of this belief? Does he understand Jean-Jacques Rousseau's concept of the general will? Does he know why John Dewey believed that all education is both political and philosophical? Can Trump realize that the art movement called Cubism makes the argument that truth is relative and not absolute? Does he comprehend how surrealism denies the rationality of the world? Would he be able to feel how ethics and aesthetics are so intimately connected in how they relate to reality? Does President Trump even know the difference between ancient and medieval and modern philosophy? Will he ever come to understand how the thoughts of Confucius should be with us today? Will Trump ever know why Socrates' idea that the unexamined life is not worth living is still true? Socrates' idea that the, sorry about that. Will Trump ever read about the philosophy of ancient India and understand why the Vedas are so important today? Will Trump ever marvel at how the dark how the dark ages of Europe occurred as Islamic philosophy blossomed? Does he understand how when the medieval philosopher was not permitted to keep science and religion separate, it caused great harm to philosophy? Is Trump aware of William Kingdom Clifford's idea that it is immoral to believe in anything by faith? arguing that our beliefs should be based upon evidence. Does he believe in naive realism as the most truthful way of viewing reality? Does our president understand that language imprisons as much as it enlightens? Is our leader even aware of the great quotes of philosophy? When Francis Bacon said, knowledge itself is power, is Trump familiar with what this means? What does he think about Think about Simone de Beauvoir's words, one is not born, but rather becomes a woman. What would you make of Protagoras' simple statement that man is a measure of all things? When Hegel said what is rational is actual, and what is actual is rational, can Trump ever appreciate the thought? Can he sympathize with Rousseau when he said man is born free, and yet everywhere he is in chains? What meaning would he give to Blaise Pascal's famous quote that the heart has its reasons of which reason knows nothing. Can he even understand what Aristotle was talking about when he said man is a rational animal? And has Trump taken the time to see who these philosophers are as people? For philosophy is very often the studying of great thinkers and their ideas, and one does not study Nietzscheism without warring with Nietzsche. Would Trump Find it strange that the philosopher Socrates never wrote anything for us to read? Could he admire the Roman slave Epictetus as he preached the philosophy of Stoicism that promoted the idea what other people do to you should not be your concern? Would he laugh to learn that the, that the profound Schopenhauer was desperate as a Hollywood starlet to become famous? What would he think about the contradiction of Hegel's philosophy being so beautiful and the fact that Hegel's, Hegel was a believer in Nazism for a period of, of his life after he had written his philosophy. What would he say about the Diogenes living like a hippie to become in tune with his real needs? Might he laugh uncontrollably when he found out Nietzsche was prof who prof 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 me, Nietzsche who prophesied the coming of the Superman ended his years in mental frailty? Would it make any sense to him to find out that Wittgenstein was born among the rich and gave his wealth away to pursue a mad old woman called Philosophia? Could he understand why after losing everything unfairly and even unjustly being in prison, how Boethius could still write of how he exists in a beautiful world that is good and just? And what are the horrors and joys of philosophy? Can Trump feel the terror and ecstasy of philosophy? Can Trump admire the bravery Socrates showed at his execution? 
When a philosopher argues that life after death and souls and gods and even ethics are just illusions to nothing more, can Trump understand the fear, rage? Does Trump understand the horror of Daniel Dennis' idea that consciousness is not really something mystically special? Does the idea that the excuse me, does the idea by the philosopher Hajime Tanabe that one must confess how we know almost next to nothing before we can philosophize give him dread? What would he what would he to me? Would he be terrified if he read Niccolo Machiavelli's The Prince, realizing how it argued that those in power should all should use any means necessary to stay in power? Is he given hope in these hours of hopelessness that consume us by the writings of the historic Emperor Marcus Aurelius? Does he does the love for all by the Chinese philosopher Mozi raise his spirits when hate often seems to be the only knighthood of our world? Has he felt the presence of both merriment and sorrow as he saw, thought about the absurdities of life? Let me read that again. Has he felt the presence of both merriment and sorrow as he thought about the uh, thought about the absurdities of life? And it should be mentioned that Trump, being a, the president of the United States, has nothing to do with why he is not a philosopher. Most of our presidents have not been known for being philosophical. But there have been, and but there have been some who have, such as Thomas Jefferson, our third president, and the principal writer of the Declaration of Independence. Jefferson also philosophically argued why democracy should be promoted and why governments exist. Trump is not a philosopher because philosopher because he does not know what philosophy is and does not practice philosophy. Trump has lived a philosopher-less life. Trump has not lived a life of a, a philosophical thinker. Trump has lived a life for success and money and fame, but not one for a deep intellectual understanding of the philosophical. And all of these facts lead to to the reasons why someone why some why, excuse me, and all these facts lead to the reasons why one can say Trump is not a philosopher. Still, some may be wondering if Trump has political views and engages in political actions. Does this mean he engages in a branch of philosophy called political philosophy? No. Trump is not a political philosopher. Almost everyone has an opinion of what our government should be doing and what it should not and what it should be concerned about. But most people are not political philosophers. I do not think there is any evidence or proof that someone can argue Trump has read the books of the most important book. Okay. I do not think there is any evidence or proof that someone can argue Trump has read the books of the most important books. Has read, excuse me, one more time. I do not think there is any evidence or proof that someone can argue Trump has read the works of the most important books that deal with the political, deal with political philosophy, understands the beliefs of Manchester, is aware of the political philosophy of Jeremy Bentham, has heard of John Rawls' veil of ignorance, thought about the socialist Pierre Joseph Proudhon's words, excuse me, the socialist Pierre Joseph Proudhon's words, property is theft, knows what is the difference between liberty and democracy, studied the various arguments of what is justice and what is not justice, has ever spoken the name Thrasymachus, 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 or could write a treatise on political theory, Yet, Trump exists in a world of politics that requires him to make ethical decisions. That is, he says and promotes certain political beliefs that are often ethical beliefs. Ethics, or moral philosophy, is a branch of philosophy. So, would these actions make him philosophical? Would doing, doing these things make him a moral philosopher, an ethicist? No. Trump does not engage in moral philosophy, even though he does take a stand on many ethical issues. Again, I find little evidence or proof that Trump has thought about if our ethics should be based on our reasoning or should simply be based on our emotions, has read books that debate whether our ethics should be based on relative culture values or absolute moral rules, knows the difference between normative ethics and meta-ethics, has talked about Kantian ethics and utilitarian ethics, 
thought about how subject subjectivism is related to our ethics, pondered over why virtue ethics is popular, wondered why some ethicists believe God and moral philosophy should always be separate, knows how to study an ethical system, thought over how human rights and moral universalism are connected, has sought out an answer to the questions has sought out an answer to the question is lying good or evil and tried to figure out how ethical egoism and psychological egoism differ. And I will make no attempt at proving or refuting Trump's ethical and political beliefs, not because they are morally defensible and reason reasonable or ethically immoral and unjustifiable, but because asking is someone a philosopher and critiquing a person's ethical and political beliefs are two separate rivers. And today the waters I have decided to travel on only ask if President Trump is a philosopher. I have tried to show by presenting numerous examples of what types of questions philosophers think about to make it clear and obvious that Trump is not a philosopher because he never thinks about these types of questions. And saying Trump is not a philosopher has nothing to do with the denial of his personal and political worldview did not of his personal political worldview. While we debate his zealous nationalism, his fear of globalism, his strong belief in law and order, and his dedication to traditionalism, his political unconventionality, and even his strange chaotic personality, excuse me, and his political unconventionality, and even his strange chaotic personality, one can say Trump is neither a political philosopher nor a moral philosopher without contradicting oneself. Having political beliefs and ethical views does not make one either a political philosopher or a moral philosopher. One, one who does not know philosophy cannot be a philosopher, and Trump does not know philosophy and therefore cannot be a philosopher. And finally, a last thought. One of the wisest quotes of philosophy comes from Socrates. The only thing I know is that I know nothing. And if Trump could just come to understand this quote, well, then he might come to understand the tragedy of living a life without philosophy.